Palea is shaping up to be one of the biggest cozy games of 2023. So today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it, how to get it early, and why I cannot wait to get my hands on it. All the information I'm giving you today I've gotten from either their hour and a half live stream, their giant FAQ section in their Discord, or information I've gotten from the website. So hopefully I'll cover just about everything you've been wanting to know. So what is Palea and why are so many people excited to play it? Palea is a free-to-play farming sim set in a beautiful fantasy world that you can either enjoy by yourself or also with your friends, as this is in fact a massive online multiplayer game. And the developers have done their best to ensure that this will be the coziest online experience you have ever played. For me personally, the thing that sucked me in was not only the graphics, because the game looks absolutely stunning, but it's also the lore that goes alongside the world. Thousands of years ago, humans were the dominant species on the world of Palea and they seem to be a thriving civilization. But for some reason that no one can really explain, humans disappeared from this world, and other than seeing human ruins scattered around the place, they had long since been considered extinct. That was until you showed up, descending from the ruins along with thousands of other humans. And that's where the game begins where you get to start a brand new life and forge a future for not just yourself, but also the whole of the human race, who are also other real-life players in the game. And not only is the world of Palea filled with stunning scenery, it also has a ton of locals to befriend as you go, each with their unique story to tell. And don't worry, at the very beginning of the game, we'll see you create your very own character. And there seems to be plenty of choices to start you off with. That's more or less the story of Palea, but what do you actually do in the game? The gameplay itself looks to be split into three different sections. First, you have the story and all the quests that go alongside of it. Then you have the world of Palea to go and explore. Not only does this include this spectacular town that's filled with people and shops that you can go to, but also these zones called adventure zones that sound like not only are they filled with great things to explore and find, but there will be more added as the game goes on. And then finally, you have your farming sim aspects. Now this is where most of the gameplay in Palia lies, and this aspect of the game will probably intertwine heavily with the main story and filling out requests. So let's quickly go over all of the farming sim features. First of all, we have fishing, which the developers described as being easy to learn, but difficult to master. You also have bug catching, foraging, like picking up plants or chopping down trees. There's mines to go explore and get resources from. You can also farm and garden as well. One of the cool things the developers mentioned was much like real life, different crops being planted together can enhance one another. So if you really want to get the maximum yield out of your farm, you can really put a lot of thought into where you're planting each and every crop. You'll also be able to upgrade your farming tools as you go. And they also mention that there's a dynamic weather system. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that affects the crops. And also the mention of seasons. Now, although we don't really know how seasons are going to work, one thing we do know is one hour in real life will be an entire day in Palea. And the nice thing about that is it means it doesn't matter what time in the day you personally can log into Palea, you'll still be able to experience a full day of daylight and nighttime in the world of Palea, which is something I do really like. Crafting seems to be one of the biggest mechanics in Palea, however, as this is the main way you'll be able to get decorating items for both inside your house and outside as well. One thing that really stood out to me from the live stream was just how customizable your house truly is. You get to decide where each house extension goes, where walls exist or don't exist in your house, and this is the first time I've seen a farming sim really lean into these sort of building mechanics, and I love it. Another thing they mentioned in the live stream was the presence of rare items. So these are furniture items that you can either grab or craft, and there even sounds like there's going to be a sort of black market for forbidden items as well, which is such a cool thing to have in a game like this. There's also a hunting mechanic, which we'll touch on later, and you can also romance NPCs. And the cool thing is you can date up to two people at the same time, 
And whilst you can't date every single character, you can learn all about them by becoming friends with them. And they did stress in the live stream that you won't miss out on any content if you choose not to romance anyone. So the stress is really more on friendships than it is romance. Romance is also the only aspect of the game where it doesn't take into account other players. So you won't all be fighting to romance the same person. You'll be able to pick from any of the characters you desire, no matter who your friends are dating. Now, all of these gameplay mechanics, like the mining, farming, hunting, all of that, have skill levels. Each of them will level up as you do the activity more, and each level you get to gives you new rewards and gameplay every time you level up. Now the thing I really really like is how they stress that you don't need to play every single aspect of the game to have a full experience. So like for example, if you really don't want to engage with the hunting mechanic, you can trade for the items or just ask your real life friends to give you the items instead. This also goes for the likes of combat as well, although this is in the game, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. The way they design these quests is so that there's always an alternative way to do something so you don't have to engage in every single mechanic. And I love this because I feel like absolutely everyone has an aspect of farming sims that they don't really care much about, and I love that we can actively avoid parts we don't enjoy. Now there doesn't appear to be a stamina mechanic in Palea whatsoever, so this means cooking is actually a big feature of the gameplay itself. They kind of substituted the stamina mechanic for something that they call focus. And the cool thing about this is instead of penalizing you for it being empty, it actually rewards you for it being full. So as long as this bar is full, you'll be receiving bonus XP for any of the tasks that you carry out. A couple of other things mentioned by the developers was that there were going to be in-game events, the introduction of things like neighborhood goals, and also an in-game camera as well. And I love the fact that the developers said they really wanted to make sure that the game didn't penalize you for not being able to log in all of the time and instead developed a game that will be there for you whenever you want to play. So that's the general gameplay mechanics. Let's get on to the multiplayer, which is obviously a huge part of an MMO. From what I understand so far is that up to 24 players can hang out in the world at any one time. This is mainly in the neighborhood area, but your party size for doing activities will be limited to four. Now, these numbers weren't the easiest to find, so I think this might depend on the stress test that's happening sometime soon. So we'll just have to wait and see just how many people can hang out at once. But in Palea, things are really more fun with your friends. And the nice thing is there's no PvP elements. So for example, if you haven't logged into Palea in a while, you won't find that your house has been set on fire or looted or your crops have been stolen or anything like that. This is all about being surrounded by other players that enhance your experience. However, that doesn't mean this game won't have any competition. The Discord gave examples of things like racing games and card games, so you can have some controlled competitive fun with your friends and family. Now, in order to encourage you to play with others, the game actually gives you a few benefits when you log in with other people. Like, for example, if you fish together and someone is struggling, you can cheer them on and give them a little buff to help them out. Or, for example, when you're catching bugs, if you do this together with friends, you'll have a higher catch chance. You can also hunt with friends as well to take down bigger animals more quickly. You can also forage and cut logs together and you both individually get loot piles that the other player can't touch so there's no competing for resources, just helping each other out. And there will even be some obstacles which you can't take down by yourself and you'll have to have friends to come and help you. Now there isn't too much information about how playing with friends will actually work. From the looks of it, you'll be able to add people as in-game friends, and this will allow you to message them as there's no voice chat. And also you'll be able to see when they're online and even ask to join them in their game. It also sounds as though they're looking into having something like a guild or a clan system that's kind of common in MMOs. But I'm very much looking forward to being able to visit people and see what they've done with their garden and their house and their decorations. I just love this idea. <laughs> Now, the cool thing about Palea is that it's a live service game. So this basically means the game is going to have constant updates all of the time and that the content the game has is only going to grow. In the Discord, they gave the goal of around 24 updates per year. 
And not all of the updates will be the same size. So they gave examples of the smaller upcoming updates, being things like the introduction of pets later on. Also having things like new outfits and new decor for your home. And in terms of bigger updates to expect, they said they're going to be adding new chapters to the story, new skills and community features, and also things like expanding the map. They did mention how this is a kind of small map for an MMO at the very beginning, but they have these areas called adventure zones, which are areas that you can explore with your friends to hunt and gather unique items and to expect not only new adventure zones, but also for them to update and edit existing ones as well. The developers said how they envisage this to be a game that will last decades. So don't stress if you can't play this game early on, because it sounds like you'll have plenty of time to play it. Now, as I mentioned, this is a free to play game. So let's quickly talk about microtransactions, as we do know this will be a part of Palea. The dev team have stated that this will be limited to cosmetic items only, so nothing to do with the actual gameplay itself will be paid. Not only did they not mention anything about paid DLC, they also said there'll be no rotating store or loot boxes in the game. And from their live stream, it looks as though in order to see these items, you have to go and walk into the dedicated store. So you won't see these paid exclusive items unless you actively go and search them out. So you're not going to find yourself constantly looking at them, trying to resist. You'll have to consciously make an effort to see them, which I think is a really big difference. Sadly, right now, we don't really have a price benchmark for any of the items we've seen so far as everything I'm showing you on the screen right now is premium store items. But I do think it's important to remember that as a free to play game, this is the only way for them to make money for the game to actually exist. So I just hope they've learned from other games and know how to do this tastefully. So I've convinced you to give this game a go. When can you actually play it and what platforms can you play it on? August 2nd is their closed beta. For this, you need to go and make an account and hope you get an email asking you to come and play it. But for everyone else, you'll be able to play the game from August 10th for their open beta. Now, this isn't the full launch of the game, so it's quite possible we're going to experience some bugs and stuff like that. And if you're wondering if your PC is strong enough to play it, I'll put up the minimum specs here. If you're like me and you know nothing about computers, though, just trust me. This is basically a potato computer, so it's worth giving a go even if you don't have something like a gaming PC. Now the open and closed beta in August is sadly PC only. I don't think we even know how it's going to be available on PC yet, like there's been no mention of Steam or anything like that. But one thing we do know is that it'll be coming to the Nintendo Switch later in 2023. I would also assume that around this time is probably where the game will exit beta and go into its full release. And if you're someone like me who has a PC and a Nintendo Switch, you'll be glad to know that not only is this cross play, so you can play with your friends regardless of whether they have a PC or a Nintendo Switch, it's also cross progression as well. Meaning that if you play the game in August on your PC, all of your progress and your character will come on over to your Nintendo Switch and you can play the same save interchangeably on both. I am so unbelievably excited for Palea and I hope I get a code to be able to play it early. I'll leave a link down below that isn't affiliated for you to go and make an account for yourself if you're also excited. And if you want to see my favorite cozy games of 2023 so far, click this video here.